Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. I've got another sentence game, and if that upsets you, well then you need to send me some replays of some really good games. I have a dearth of replays at the moment. I have a bunch of little shorter clips. I'm probably going to do another double header uh, for the next cast that I do, but I need some good solid long games, like 45 minute games. They're actually pretty fun to cast. The more that I do this, the more I enjoy it but uh, don't really have enough material at the moment. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this sentence, and it is an action-packed one, I can assure you. At least the first 30 minutes is non-stop, so we will get some cool stuff out of this. Let's go ahead and introduce the teams, then we will dive straight into the action. We've got, on the northern side, Miss Shu taking, that is, Seraphim on the beach. We've got Schlappy, <laughs> that is a hilarious name. I don't even know if that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Cybern on the front. We've got Kirik taking Aeon Air, as is to be expected, and another Cybern for Cool on the rock position. Cull, whatever. I, I butcher name pronunciations. Everyone should know this by now. We've got Chesney Hawks on the front for the southern side, also taking Cybern. Got a Cybern Cybern mirror matchup up there. And then we've got Bane as UEF on the beach. Manslayer as Aeon Air. And last but certainly not least, Schwarzenegger taking Seraphim on the rock. Hopefully he will live up to his name because if he, if he does not strong arm the entire match, I'm going to be entirely disappointed. Okay, we've got a hunter out early for the front here. That can actually be a good choice. It depends on how much you sacrifice your early game to get it out. In this particular instance, I would say that it probably was not worth it because that leaves this engineer trailing far, far behind the ACU, whereas we have a nice, close engineer right here that is going to get some good mass. Um, that will, however, loop around the back and probably maybe deny the hydro. He changed directions. He's heading straight down the center, which is a bad thing. It means a tank is going to pick him up. If he would have gone around the outside edge, that probably could have ended very well. This is a pretty ridiculous build order here. Schwarzenegger has actually walked from his spawn and he is going out to claim a mechs and build a land factory with his ACU. All of you pro players out there, take notes. This is the new meta right here. <laughs> if it works for him, I'm going to be very happy. But uh, if he does not get everything locked down like he should, that is probably the reason wasting all of that walking time when you have 10 perfectly good build power in your ACU that you can use other places. Got a reasonably good air response out here. Bane pushing out an interceptor, two interceptors and a scout. Looks like he is going to get up here well before a transport comes out for cool, but I'm going to say Cole. That sounds better. Cole. Cole does have two interceptors of his own, so he is going to be able to push out towards the island. Both of these guys anticipating a drop early. That is not going to be the case. Yellow scouting that transport, and I'm sure Bane will be able to nab it. Hopefully. Apparently he didn't see it. Oh well. Opportunity missed. But up here we do have a drop. This is going to be a whole bunch of engineers. I thought for sure that we were going to see a drop on the island, but no. Taking the early strike... He is going to drop engineers right on front's base. Probably going to throw down some T1 point defense. Schlappy is completely failing to get any mass here. I saw the comment over there. Let's take a quick peek here. Wrong person. Schlappy has gotten 2,700 mass. And Chesney, on the other hand, has gotten 6,500, which is a brilliant lead. <laughs> this is not going to end well for front here. Although this should have been uh, should have started laying down land factories, not the slow point defense creep. Because eventually we're going to get a bomber and we're going to start seeing Medusas here. That's going to completely stall this. So, oh death. Well, he didn't get any mass, but he dealt a whole lot of damage. That is interesting. Apparently, cannons to the face are not what Chesney Hawks is good at handling, but. When you have a death that early in the game, it's actually not entirely a bad thing. All of the mass extractors got locked down. We do have a factory here, so there's no harm done. And we have double eco for the rock player very early in the game. So if he gets his stuff together and really lays into this navy right here, he will be able to obliterate it pretty easily and then lock down mid with his navy. 
is going to give him a huge amount of strategic options. On the other hand, Sh uh, Schlappy should be getting more land factories down and pushing this because there is a division of APM. Schwarzenegger is not going to be able to entirely focus his attention on one slot or the other and if he is able to get out a quick land spam he would be able to overrun this. Now I say that knowing full well that we've got trouble up here. There's the Medusas that I was talking about and the bombers and jesters and all kind of other air tools that can kill off those engineers and point defense but uh, that is going to hamper his effort. So all in all, I think this worked out very well in favor of the Southern team. They got the majority of the min mass. They have a double eco here, even though they lost a player to, well, I'm not gonna say it was a stupid death because he got all of the mass, but he did basically stand there taking ACU cannon fire until he died. So you can draw your own conclusions from that. And that leaves everybody in a pretty good position on the Southern side. Now we do have these bombers coming in. Not going to do a whole lot of damage though, I think, because we do have interceptors. On the northern side, there was a drop. The drop did make it for Schwarzenegger. So he is going to claim his island, but it looks like we have a combat drop over here. We've got five Tech 1 artillery, which should easily be able to stomp out this base. We have contested air control, two bombers, and another transport, separate transport with the engineers. This is going to work out brilliantly. I do believe that Michu is going to snatch the island, and that would be greatly beneficial. As I've mentioned before, and I'm sure everybody already knows, if you have the island, that is five mass extractors, so that would make a total of 17 for the beach and a total of 18 for the rock versus 12 versus 13 so it is a huge huge eco advantage artillery is on the ground I'm gonna start wiping out these land factories need to focus fire the one that is actually producing units because if he gets a tank out that's gonna be really bad but thankfully the artillery will lock the factory as the shots come down upon it it kills the tank that's producing inside has to restart every time and that's pretty much the end of it building anti-air with the engineers that is a wise decision because we do have interceptors here uh, question is can they get out of the way before this bomber comes in this is going to kill both of these engineers I think and that is going to be the end of that push I'm gonna have artillery on the island but if you don't have engineers on the island well then it's no good and kaboom there they go no direct fire only artillery and only one anti-air but a counter drop there are drops everywhere here's another one down here <laughs> front is going to go drop the navy there's an artillery drop and a counter drop this was probably headed for the base over here but instead he's going to drop it on this side definitely need to lay down a land factory up here so that you can produce tanks and this is the luckiest transport alive right here because it did actually manage to slip through and leave behind these interceptors which are probably out of fuel judging by how slowly they are traveling yes so well done on that run by those are gonna drop right here probably and that has been dealt with only minimal damage nothing really to be concerned about down there and Medusa's Ahoy killing off all these mass extractors at their leisure because there is no answer to that combat force. There is a bomber up here, yes, but it is not coming down south. And here comes the artillery. It has accomplished its task and so it is going to get reused. It's going to get dropped right here in the base of Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger does not have any air to answer, but he is doing a brilliant job of running over the front. There are some gestures up there. Don't believe he has any anti-air in that mix, but that is okay because he has so many Tech 1 units that there's really not any chance of that stopping it. So the Medusas have successfully killed off two mass extractors. Too bad they cannot reach the last one apparently. The bomber laying down right here and the anti-air caught this transport, so that is a win there. No more successful drops. Alrighty, going to have to grab that island and... And is he going to make it so close to the water? Both fronts down and a significant spam advantage in the hands of the south. 
But we do have two jesters here. We have a naval factory, kind of interesting. A whole lot of Tech 1 bombers coming down from Mishu. And double eco to the rock. So we have double eco for both rocks. This is basically a war in this direction. We have a horizontal war <laughs> on sentence, which is not something that you see very often. Um, this is going to be an interesting direction here. Because this is going to really drastically split the focus. Neither one of these guys is going to be able to focus 100% on his navy. Because if he loses the front, then he's going to lose this side through the back. Alright, another drop. Full of engineers, right under two bombers, which I believe are going to thoroughly put down that invading force. And then what do we have here? A T2 artillery drop coming in. T2 transport is going to be more than sturdy enough to survive these two. Well, no, there's three anti-airs. I think it'll still be okay. Yes, T2 transports are very tough and very fast. Not a problem. Artillery going to start firing over there. And looks like we do have Tech 3 on the field from Manslayer. He did get fa uh, fairly far ahead of his opponent, actually, on air. Where is his opponent? Kirik. Very far ahead of his opponent. Uh, Kirik just now has T3 and RAS, and now he's going to start air production. It's about a 5 ASF lead for Manslayer. So Manslayer could potentially do some damage. We have a cruiser out along with the destroyer for this navy and that is absolute carnage that is so sad to watch we've got zooey's plowing the rear portion of this base under some of them did get killed off just a few of them but there's still more than enough to wreak some havoc possibly i would make a beeline for this t3 max back here that is exactly what i would do somebody needs to get some gunships online to help that poor guy out before he loses all of his eco and somebody please drop this island. The empty mass extractor slots hurt my eyes. So much wasted mass potential. Alright, looks like T2 air. Ah, uh, it's for the transport. So I was thinking maybe he might be going for T3 air as well, but I doubt it. Gunships coming in to assist. Going to pop off those zooies. Going to cause some minor damage. Nothing too major in that area. But there was another mass extractor kill right here. So all in all, a significant amount of damage to Mishu. That drop was very well worth it. And that is going to, I think, overall put the southern team ahead. Although this navy is not looking healthy at all. There is a massive frigate spam going on here. This is critical with Cybern. Cybern has by far the strongest frigates. They're an essential tool in your navy. And if you can spam up enough frigates, you can pretty much run over anything. We have a couple of Tech 1 subs and two destroyers down here. I hate to say it, but the Cyber Navy is just going to run over UEF at this point. UEF has a very weak T2, except for that mobile shield. And while there is a mobile... Sh no, there's not. I thought... Yes, there is. Right there. I knew I saw one. While there is a mobile shield, one is not going to be enough and only three destroyers. I think that this is going to be a loss. We've got two, three destroyers coming in and about a dozen to 15 frigates and then a second wave coming in immediately behind it. On the front side, we've only got T1 guarding it. This is a potential weak spot. I don't think he realizes how much T2 and T1 is over here because this... If he could see this, he would have far more fortifications up there. Alright. Time to put down this navy. We've got all three of those destroyers in range, plus the frigates. And you can see we've got three destroyers versus three destroyers, and then all of the frigates here will tip the balance in the favor of Cull. T3 Tort Bomber coming in. That may actually tip it back. I don't think there's enough navy here to survive that and actually kill off the build power down here. He's doing a significant amount of damage to the build power, and he's killed off all of the destroyers, but in the end, I think he's going to end up leaving a mass donation here and having to travel back north. Cruisers in the North Navy, that's going to cause some eco damage, and it looks like air is... Temp... Well... Yeah, air is temporarily lost due to torpedo bomber production. 
So Carrick is going to be able to kill off all of these torpedo bombers and help out his navy. Still got four, five, four. <laughs> counting up and then counting back down because one just died. Four destroyers over here versus one. So this is going to be a continuing loss of build power. On the northern side up here, we've got T2. Yes, moving in across. This is going to start moving up into the base. Point defense going down. There were not enough units and not enough production to make units, so the answer is point defense. Throwing down some shields, cyber point defenses suck though, so I think these are going to have no trouble breaking that fire base. At this point, this is when you build T1 point defense, because T1 point defense does much more damage for far less mass and is overall way better at killing off groups like this. Could have taken all your T1 engineers and just started building strings of Tech 1 point defense and it would have bought you a lot of time. I believe one cruiser was lost, yes, and the destroyer possibly, or was that another cruiser? Were there four cruisers? I think there were four cruisers. Artillery is a nasty son of a gun, especially when it floats. Got more frigates and a destroyer here. This navy looks fairly even at the moment, but I will say that there is a lot more build power here. So as Red gets a little bit of reclaim and gets his eco back online, Red will be able to far outproduce Schwarzenegger at this point in the game. And he's going to go up here and kill off these cruisers as well. T3 mass extractors going down right off the bat up there. Probably need to get some assistance on those engineers to build those as quickly as possible. Got T2 stationary artillery going down. Bane is building like his life depends on it, and that is probably the case. Got air infrastructure going down for Manslayer. Manslayer doing a brilliant job at air here. His production is screaming high. Yellow jumping in on the tort bomber game. It is very nice to do. Team helping his teammate. That is exactly what you need to do when your shoreline looks like this. Because this is not a good situation to have. At all. That means you're about to lose all of your eco. Air collision! And we've got an engineer drop for more reclaim. Unless it gets popped. Oh, yes, it got it off. Okay. So error is relatively well contested. The only reason Manslayer is not winning is because Manslayer is building lots and lots of torp bombers to try and prevent any further damage down there. At some point, you got to declare the Navy a lost cause, but uh, apparently that point has not been reached yet. All right, so the wreckage in the middle here is telling me that the initial invasion failed, but only just barely, and now there is a second wave coming in. However, the Rhino predict production is strong with this one, and he is going to get a nice little clump of Rhinos together, which is going to absolutely lay waste to the Hoplites and Vipers that are there, unless he doesn't move. If he just sits here and lets all of these things get out of range, well, then they're obviously going to kill stuff and not die. And now he got tanks coming under fire from Vipers. Not a very... Not getting your mass worth out of those things when they're just taking fire at range from the, uh, from the Vipers. So cruisers moving back in. Going to start popping off some eco once again. Unless they don't. Unless they just start firing randomly at Tech 1 artillery, which is a huge waste. Got some Tech 1 artillery up here. I believe that was a drop, but engineers now snatching up the reclaim, and the production that is pushing artillery is going to succeed at somewhat keeping all of this at bay. There's a lot of torpedo defense going down out here, and again, the build power is scary up there. When that wave of frigates comes out, that is going to be devastating. Okay, Bane, still on T2. Manslayer has SACUs down here building shields. He's telling Bane to go T3 to get point defense online, which uh, overall I would say that T3 point defense is a terrible naval defense, but when you have your opponent camping on your shore like this, T3 point defense could feasibly push them off of your shore enough to get a new foothold. And T2 gunships did save the day over here. Once again, this base is secure, although a little bit more eco did get taken away. And I think it's just going to sit. 
does not look like Schwarzenegger is interested in another assault, but he is interested in hover tank production. All of these frigates are going to move northwards and deal with that pesky problem. You do not want to let hover tanks build up a big blob because when that wave rolls over you, your navy is going to die. You want to kill off the hover tanks as they're streaming in. Overall, frigates are better than hover tanks because they have more range and more health per mass, but getting a critical amount of frigates in the same area to kill off the hover tanks is a different story. You have to select groups of frigates and pile the groups on top of each other, not select all and go one time because then your navy will spread out and you notice that the navy spread out covers a huge amount of area and the hover tanks cover a small amount of area which means you can focus your mass better on specific targets and take out the entire group fairly easily. Navy running back down towards the south because we do have Ravagers online. That is going to start killing off these Salem. Salem's do outrange Ravagers by a tiny, tiny amount. He needs to back those up and start firing from maximum range. But the Ravager creep is strong. These guys have a lot of eco and not a whole lot to build. So they are going to be able to push those forward at a pretty rapid pace and continue to cause havoc among this navy. Got hover spam online as well. That is brilliant. So we've got two groups of hover spam now. I'm going to pinch them in the middle after being severely weakened by the Ravagers here. And I think that is going to be the end of the naval domination in the Southern Sea. That is sad to see go because I think that will decidedly tip the map in favor of the Southern team. It has been looking pretty good for the North for a while because of this Navy, but Manslayer did a brilliant job. I, I cannot 100% agree with the method that he used, but it did work and he did save his Southern Navy. So hopefully this will work out well. He'll be able to get back in the water, produce some units. We've got a massive pile of reclaimed thousands of mass in that stack. Honestly, you could probably build a fat boy with the reclaim that's right there, considering the amount of T2 Navy that's in the water. And I think that would probably be a good choice, actually, because the fat boys would outrange all of these destroyers. But there's a battleship. <clears throat> we may actually see things turn out okay for the Northern Navy. The hover tanks are starting to get a bit thin. We do have some cruisers down here for air protection. Torpedo bombers, which are not really hitting anything, I think, because these are hover tanks. And a battleship, which is going to be able to throw down fire from a very long range, longer than the Ravagers can reach. Continuing power buildup from Kirik. He is building T3 mass fabricators instead of capping his mass extractors with T2 which is the most efficient way to go. I was seeing if anybody else here has the T2 caps and I don't see anyone yet. T2 mass fabricators are by far more efficient than the T3 mass fabricators are. And what you do is you build a diamond around your mass extractor. I'm sure everyone has seen it happen before. And when you build that little diamond, uh, it's about the best mass gain you can get for mass investment outside of the T3 max upgrade that you just got. Also, it's nice for the air player because you typically overflow a lot of power as the air player and you can use the mass fabricators to regain that waste as mass. Alrighty then, T3 on the front. Probably going to see brick production. And... Looks like air is fairly even. Do not want to engage over cruisers because when your numbers are this close, the cruisers are going to decide it. I think Manslayer actually does have a little bit more, but not a significant amount. Actually, if these had been down south, there would have been a pretty much exactly even number, I think. Kirik has 148. Manslayer has 128 but the production is higher from Manslayer, so that is only going to go southwards for the Northern team. Um, one thing to remember with your ASF production, it is always a good thing to select all your air factories, place one move order, and then you can drag that move order around 
to place your production queue, all of your ASF will go that way. And that can actually be the deciding factor in an air fight, not the initial engagement amount. It's who is adding more ASF to the fight as they go. Because if you're adding two ASF per second, or an ASF per second anyway, um, to the fight, that is a huge advantage if the other person's not adding any. So you want to keep all of your ASF kind of clumped up in this direction as long as you're confident with your scouting and nothing is coming in from the other side. If you're anticipating an air battle, you need 100% of your ASF there because dividing your force in half has a huge impact. Monkey Lord! That was a very fast Monkey Lord built by all of these T3 engineers and it's going to come online just in time to stop that T3 push. Got Loyalist moving up. Monkey Lord is going to head southwards. I don't think there is enough anywhere here to stop that Monkey Lord. But there is a battleship now bearing down on the mid. Looks like we're about to lose some eco here. That is an excellent target for Schwarzenegger to pick. And let's see. Do we have nukes anywhere? We have nuke defense, which is not loaded, but very nearly. And nothing too terribly much other in the way of offensive structures. Your structures offend me. That is exactly what they do. Um, okay, so northern side. Pardon me for the zooming around a bit, guys. Just kind of looking here. We have nuke defense over here, which is loaded. And we have nuke defense over here, which is loaded. So nice job on the nuke defense, bro. We're definitely safe. And laying down far, far more power. Do you have an Awasa going down? <clears throat> Excuse me. When... You have a lot of mass, and you don't have any naval production, you end up with a lot of mass in your pocket. And you might as well spend that on a T4. A T4 is usually a good idea, a good place to dump your mass when you're overflowing. Monkey Lord is just kind of casually chilling out here, obliterating this mass extractor with his longer range guns. He needs to get a move on though, and do as much damage as he can before he loses that Monkey Lord because he does have battleships and other things coming down upon him. Eventually air will intervene and that's when it will get nasty. This Awasa is going to be awesome if the guy can micro it, if Misha can miss you. I miss you too. Um, if the Awasa can be microed to land a significant number of shots on this navy out here, he can technically kill off the entire navy with that one Awasa. If air is not lost, and I am seeing more green than blue there I think, Gonna be close, got another group of blue. Nobody's microing, because apparently attack move is easier. Actually, I don't necessarily disagree with that. So blue is now clumping and microing some. No, get your ASF in the fight. If you do not use all your ASF, you will lose. Divide and conquer is a real thing. Okay, and another group from blue and green. This is the longest continual air fight I think I've seen in a very long time. Okay, separation, withdrawal, anxiety, and blue definitely has more ASF now. And it looks like they're actually roughly even on production. There's the Awasa! There's now a significant dip in the number of ASF on the field, so hopefully this Awasa will live a long and healthy life. It completely bypassed the Navy and it's now headed south. It's gonna fly directly past all of these ASF, which are gonna fall on the tail, and Hopefully it will leave, live, I mean. No! Not even going to get a bomb off. 12,000 health left, and thankfully the ASF did not pursue. Cruisers, stop, please, it hurts my eyes. And Owas is dead. It got off a bomb, though. Killed a mass extractor and some engineers. If he would have dropped a bomb, like, right there, and killed all of those engineers. He could have killed the, um, or damaged the battleship in progress. And he would have vetted the Awasa, which probably would have saved the Awasa's life. And now, I think air control is going to be, oh my goodness, even over top of the cruisers. Apparently there was just enough ASF. <clears throat> Got something hanging in my throat here. That was on one hand awesome and on one hand really sad very nicely done on air from Carrick. he is impressing me at the moment very nicely done for a 1000 rank um, 
and the hover. My goodness, the hover. Holy cow. We have a hover from like 20 factories for Bane and then another dozen and a half from yeah that's about a dozen producing T1 artillery and then strap bombers so this is a coordinated focused effort to drive this navy back these guys want this property back they want the reclaim that's sitting under all of these combat units all of these battleships and stuff are in danger but thankfully there was actually enough Salem's back there to eliminate that hover spam that was impressive I'm amazed that the hover spam did not succeed at that because that was so much hover but battleship has gotten away from his group and I think the battleship is about to go bye bye thanks to the zooies so there's gonna be one battleship down and a little bit easier to deal with for the southern team and a counter hover push so much hover I'm not believing this there <laughs> there's another 15 factories up here and another Awasa nearly done red really needs to give that Awasa to a teammate that knows how to micro it because if he continues to lose Awasas like that he would be better off building chickens and going to the mid got a megalith and a monkey lord this is the full complement of cyber and brute force monkey lord is extremely good at knocking off targets close up megalith for rear support and if the megalith can get in range it can actually wreck those battleships but and all the battleships are focus firing on the monkey that is very nice megalith needs to be making a beeline for these battleships well no there's destroyers too a lot more battleships than i thought there were there's another group up here. There's six total at the front and another on the way. So not, that is way too much for a single megalith to handle. All right, got a drop moving out over here that is all engineers. Not sure what he's gonna be doing over there. Probably producing Navy. Maybe, perhaps, yes he is. I'm going to get naval production underway away from all of this fighting. And the T2 torpedo creep is very strong here trying to drive a wedge in between the attack force and the production. If you can save your build power and get some navy online, yes, navy is back in the water. Got two shield boats up, building a third, got hover out, and reclaiming now. So the reclaim numbers are about to go through a massive spike, and we have a galactic colossus from Manslayer. That is going to wander up here, and the Owas is finished. Let's see where it goes. Air really needs to accompany that Awasa so he doesn't lose a second one because that would be sad. Alright, bombs away. Not the best placement. Gonna kill a handful of destroyers and Awasa's dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh at people, but that that's just that's just awesome. Oh man. As previously stated, should have given it to someone else to micro. Okay. Galactic Colossus coming up on shore now. I don't really see anything that can stop it at this point unless the sheer number, the cataclysmic tide of Zooies is somehow able to kill this GC. I think that's pretty much the only chance we have at this point. That nuke defense is loaded with three, but it is going to go down. We got strap bombers coming in to lay down some fire on it. Looks like we got SACUs moving into the water. Northern Navy is one, so this rock player is doing the sensible thing and jumping into the South Navy to win it as well, hopefully. We've got a Galactic Colossus about to make the very long journey from the north to the south across the water here. That's where you would be better off flying your engineers out here and building a Galactic Colossus in the water. Air fight engaged! Dropping me down to zero sim speed. And Blue has won it once again. Quick side note while things are kind of, well, no, here we go. T4s are back on land. I will not get sidetracked. I will observe what is going on here. We have a Galactic Colossus very nearly done and under shields here and strap bombers. 
So hopefully between all of this working together, these guys will be able to deal with this. The Megalith is taking a substantial amount of Zooey fire from the rear. Zooey's by themselves do not seem very intimidating versus a T4. You can look at the size difference. Holy cow, that should trample all over them, right? Well, there's a lot of damage in T1 artillery, and when the T1 artillery is not getting shot down, that is going to lay down a huge amount of damage on the Megalith with the help of some mercies, and then the GC is pretty much going to plaster it in the face. So, that is a total failure of a T4 push. That is not good for the northern team that uh, I think that was being counted upon rather heavily. Thankfully, the navy is still intact over here. Cole is uh, doing a pretty good job considering the circumstances. Actually, a brilliant job considering the circumstances. He is currently fighting three people and holding his ground relatively well. Although there is now a summit in the water, two summits in the water, and more producing. So this is about to end badly, I think. Also, tack launchers. Is that tack launchers? It looked like tack launchers. But I don't see any. Oh well. That is neither here nor there. Okay. The reason that I can comfortably cast Sentence now is because, as you can see, I am holding with a solid zero late game with all of this crap on the field because my power supply fixed everything. The reason that I could not get a stable overclock before apparently was because my power supply was underperforming because I was overdrawing it. Um, I only had a 600 watt power supply and I needed about a 750 which is what I have now. Now that I've upgraded my power supply I'm sitting in a comfortable 4.6 gigahertz, completely crash free and totally stable on my 3570K which is allowing me to cast at comfort, at comfortable speeds in a sentence game. Maybe I can untie my tongue long enough to talk here. Um, so yeah, these big maps will no longer bother me anymore and it's not such a great deal to commit to casting a one hour long game. We've got Galactic Colossus is, is, is kind of standing around up here, definitely in a defensive posture which I can't completely argue with but I would think that they would do some good if they were pushed down south. Manslayer producing a whole lot of SACUs, which I'm sure are undergoing the RAS upgrade, although his mass income is still substantially behind Kyrix. Don't see any nukes. There's the tack launchers that I was looking at before, looking right at them and not seeing them. And on the northern side, we do have a nuke launcher, which is very nearly loaded. <clears throat> So much power. Holy cow, so much power. Four anti-nukes loaded. Nice job balancing eco there. And we've got three nukes. Three nukes loading for Cull. That is going to be a nasty surprise for the southern team, which I'm afraid is underbuilding its... Uh, well, no, there's one. I did not think there was one on beach, but it is right there. Although he could probably wing all of this production outside the reach of that new defense. And then, let's see, we've got three loaded here and two loaded up there. So these guys are relatively nuke proof. We got one over here, two nukes back to back. A concentrated effort could take out Schwarzenegger, um, or his base anyway. And the Navy production has been discovered. We've got T3 subs in the water, but there's a whole bunch of frigates headed down there. It's going to kill off all that build power more than likely. And this is not good. The summits are in range of the Salems. The Salems are going to wreck those two and then proceed to obliterate any thought of hover dominance. My goodness. This is the Navy that just keeps on giving. i got to give props to Cole for... Uh, for managing to stay in the water despite all of this pushback. Got battle cruisers coming out now. I do think that is definitely the wiser choice for production. A couple of battleships kept way in the back would not be a bad thing, but battle cruisers do such a brilliant job versus destroyers and frigates that you can't not build them. You definitely need to have those. And surprise, surprise, the Galactic Colossus has actually made it all the way across. 
And this is nasty right here. Very nasty. Built an Omni and building tack launchers up there. Galactic Colossus is going to proceed northwards. Got a support commander coming in to try and kill it. It is a UEF support commander, so it's actually going to do a fair amount of damage. Would eventually kill the Galactic Colossus pretty easily if it could follow it. Um, Galactic Colossus wasting its eye beam and going to walk directly into T3 point defense. No! You should have gone the other way. Why did you go this way? That was not smart. Nuke is on the way, probably for naval production. I would assume that, that is the case. SACU's running back in anticipation. Question is, is the nuke defense close enough to stop that? I think not. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, man. Proven wrong yet again. Galactic Colossus heading northwards. So many gunships out here. Accompanied by so many cruisers. Galactic Colossus is, is, is being built left and right by both sides. Alright, Manslayer says he's building Artie. So that was the nuke there. Still loading these three. Let's see how Manslayer is coming along. Salvation! He is one-fifth of the way, 20% on that thing. Although at the rate that this is going and the amount of reclaim that is dropping all over the field, I think he will probably manage to get it built. And Cull has decided that he is going to refocus his attention southwards. He does have a megalith in the water, King of the Seas. That is not something that you see super often, but he is actually making use of the awesome torpedo damage and super high tanky health of that Megalith. Megalith actually does do pretty well versus T3 subs. Definitely an advantage to have in your navy if you can afford the mass cost. These SACUs I do believe are doomed. DOOMED I tell you! And Battlecruiser is producing like crazy now. We got two out, but versus this many battleships and Salem's, it's going to take a whole lot to get an advantage on this front. I think that Cull has managed to reach critical density with his navy, where his navy is basically, uh, you can't kill it unless you get a huge mass of your own to come in, because the trickle just isn't working against this much, just the sheer amount of firepower that's coming down here. Got strap bombers headed in. Hopefully those could do a little damage to some of the weaker units. Tacks are online in great quantity, but I don't think they have been fired yet. Don't know what he would fire at. Let's see what's in range. That is in range. Looks like we've got units coming in though. This is about to come to an end. Party is over. Battleship's going to start laying down fire. That is overkill like nothing you've ever seen. A battleship killing a Zooey. That is wasting basically 99% of the damage. <laughs> oh well, such it is. Need to launch this if he has any hope of doing anything. I'm going to laugh hysterically if that artillery just impacts. Yep. Ah, that's just sad. Here comes the counterattacks. It's going to impact and kill all of those off. One more attack, and all of that will be dead. Tactical defense coming in. Strats. That is a friendly strat, actually. Why would you try to build T2 artillery there? In all seriousness, look at the wall. Just look at the wall. There's no way you're going to shoot over that. Oh, well. To each his own got gunships in great quantity coming down on the Navy here. Although the Navy has officially been eradicated. It did. There is only one support factory left. The HQ is gone. All the build power is gone. This many T2 gunships is quite frightening though. Got a huge amount of air up here. Let's switch again. We've got 345 
versus 215. So decisive win probably for the northern side. And finally my CPU bumped to minus. Oh well. It was bound to happen at some point. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see if we can see minus two when this air collides here. Those gunships are doing a brilliant job. The Salems do have a substantial amount of anti-air, but there was just so many gunships. They were able to do a huge amount of damage before it was all said and done. These two commanders down here need to be dealt with quite quickly. The rapid fire is, yes, at 62%. When that comes online, it's going to cause bad things to happen for the northern team. I don't know why this GC is still in the water. Should have been pushed a long time ago. Alright, the northern team has fought valiantly and done... Oh, Paragon! What? This is going to be a Paragon and a Salvation. Paragon is probably going to come online far after the Salvation, though, unless these guys pull a miracle out of their hats getting mass. These guys are going to need to dump a ton into it. If they can get that Paragon online, they have a slim slim chance probably the only chance they have is to span the ever living daylights out of teleport SACUs and just teleport like 10 SACUs over here to kill this thing from inside the shields I think that would be about the only option that they have at this point when that uh, salvation comes online all of this crap is going to start dying probably primary targets are going to be build power and the power out here and that is not going to end well at all for the northern team. Paragon is very close actually. It is 87%. Salvation is 76. But again, the Paragon costs more, but there are multiple people focusing on the Paragon, so it may make it. We're at 90%. Problem is going to be having enough build power to make full use of that Paragon and protecting it because Salvation is going to be online shortly after. Alright, we've got 79%. Paragon's actually going to finish first. What? 93%. We may actually see a comeback. I'm losing a huge chunk of map control here. This is, this is not looking too terribly good, but uh, when that Paragon comes online, things may turn around for those guys. They still have a very slim hold on the Southern Navy. It has started to slip a tiny amount. Um, there's still a good amount of Navy here, but there's not quite as much as there was before. Megalith is going to make sure, though. It's going to start moving forwards. Probably going to try to kill off some of this build power. The Megalith is brutal with its main guns. Actually, if it could walk over this way some, it could probably kill that summit quite easily. And that would help out. All right, Paragon is online. Now we get to see what gets built. Salvation is at 88%. So the Northern team has a very tiny window in which to make use of that Paragon. And we have strap bombers, a whole pile of strap bombers that are being sat on over here. I think that with the air control that the Northern team has, they could pro, well, no, there's a lot of Sams and too many shields. It, you could not get past those Sams with enough strap bombers. Maybe from the Northern side, but there's still a couple of Sams up there that are gonna kill off some of your strap bombers. And if your strap bombers are, cl are clumped up, they're gonna kill a lot of strap bombers. Oh, this is frustrating. Tack launch! Megalith is going to take a severe hit. Galactic Colossus can easily kill it now. Megalith was going after naval build power. I don't know that that was a worthy trade for that Megalith. That was not the best. Not terrible, but I'm kind of sad that it was lost in that manner. Alright, the SACUs have claimed this territory. Yellow is going to start building for all he's worth. Why 
are you building a second paragon right next to the first one. You need to build it way far away so if the first one dies, you have a backup. That is the entire point of having a backup. Both of these are going to go nuclear in the same shot. That may actually decide the game right there. Because if the Paragon was built further away, even if the first one died to the Salvation, this, the Northern team would have a backup. Here comes the Salvation. It is too late to think about that now. Salvation is going to start raining down fire from above. And my, I just hope that these guys come up, come up with a solution fast enough to kill that thing to save their, save themselves. We've got a Yolana Oss going up again inside the nuke range of the Paragon. Guys, if you learn one thing from this cast, one thing, it is that you don't build things near your Paragon, especially other Paragons. And you don't build the Paragon inside your base unless you have no other choice. And why is this nuke launcher paused? That's interesting. You have infinite eco. Build it. Um, you should build a Paragon, like, over here. So the nuke radius does not totally take out your base. And then you build the other Paragon, like, over here somewhere. Or out here. Even if it's more exposed, your second one, it offers a nice juicy target. Oh, triple nuke! Those are headed somewhere. Question is, is the nuke defense dead wherever they are headed to? There is zero nuke defense in that. Alrighty then. Salvation is actually firing at the rock position, which is a terrible waste of the salvation. We got Zooey Spam headed up north here. We're now in map recovery mode got to re-expand, re-secure your territory, spam all of the T4 that you possibly can. Triple nuke is going to land, take out that GC, this entire base. One nuke would have sufficed, but, uh, oh, well, no, two. I think that would have loaded right before it hit. All right. Somebody dropped the ball on communications here. Oh. Ha, <laughs> Manslayer commenting on the fact that they have a Paragon. Alright, as long as they can protect the Paragon, they're golden. But now that these guys know that there's a Paragon, that Salvation is going to be focus fired on this Paragon. 100% positive. The second one is almost up. This is a double nuke with an ACU standing right next to it. And the Alana Oss within range. These guys need to move, and move quickly away from that area. They need to be out here. There's enough ASF on the map already. Probably just go 100% strat bombers from all factories. And they could just kill everything with strat bombers because there wouldn't be enough anti-air in the world to stop that many strat bombers. Alright. See, they're already saying second Paragon only has a couple of shields. Yolana Oss is going to come online. This is going to be a nasty... Oh, the for crying out loud, the third Paragon is going right next to the first two. Why? Why? We're about to watch the saddest catastrophe. I may have to classify this cast as an epic fail. I, I think I will. Because... I have no words to describe the amount of fail that is about to happen here. The Salvation is going to easily break down these shields. And when it does, it's going to land one hit on this Paragon. And the Paragon is going to go nuclear and take this entire base with it. Thankfully, Kirik is outside the nuclear radius, so he will actually have time to contemplate his sins. But his teammate will not be so lucky. We got shields being built, trying to get some protection up. Down to a single shield. Here comes the breaker. Why did I just go to minus five? Because there is an ASF engagement. Holy kashmoles. Wow. Alright, I gotta see this. 
We got 426 versus, well, now 250. Probably more like 300 when it began. I just zoomed in on that. It's like everything started moving in slow motion. Why is this? So many strap bombers killing that monkey lord there. Oh my word. This is so close to ending terribly. Alright, air control has fallen into the hands of the southern team. I think this is about to be over. Paragon is going to take a hit. Mm, this one maybe? Oh my. Come on. Blow. There it is. That is the shot. I think that is the shot. Nope. Why are you so unpredictable, Salvation? Oh, there it is. Kaboom! Double nuke. ACU nuke. Half the base gone. That is why you do not, <clears throat> do not ever build multiple paragons within blast radius of each other. That's just, that. I, I was so hopeful. I was so hopeful. The Northern team had a chance. They really did. They did brilliantly getting that Paragon online. And then it just, it, it just, it hurts. It hurts to look at. Kind of makes me want to cry a little bit. To invest this much time into a sentence game and have it end this badly is, is sad. Oh well better luck next time. Now we get to watch the southern team stomp all over everyone. Hopefully they can kill everyone quickly so that this game can be over with. We have six, uh, five, six, five GCs in the middle here, but I don't think those are going to be able to break through anything because the southern team has complete and total air domination. So there's really nothing that these guys can do against the inevitable rush of strap bombers that will kill all of these GCs. So sad. So, so terribly sad. Did that take the, uh... Oh, it didn't take the Alona Oss! Well, no. It's still too far gone. With the Salvation Online and all the nuke defense that they have down here, there's no way that the Alona Oss is, uh is going to be able to take all of that out. Maybe they can get a sucker punch in. Maybe. But I really highly doubt it. These nukes are about to get obliterated by that salvation and Cole is standing right there. He's probably just done with the world. Singing goodbye world. Just sick of existing. He knows that there's no point in life anymore. This is starting to get really nasty over here. This push is quite brilliant. Schwarzenegger is basically denying the map. He is building up a substantial amount of stationary defenses, making it impossible for the northern team to reclaim this territory, which is indirectly severely damaging their eco. And here's the strap bombers, as predicted. Kaboom! Shredding a significant amount of health in one pass. All right, Salvation has succeeded in breaking the shields. The nukes are next. That is the shot that's going to do it. Kaboom. One is gone. Two are damaged. Shields are disappearing quite rapidly. The Alona Oss is online. Oh, look, escape this. That was a very nice choice right there. Start laying down fire on all those battleships. Skathis is a brilliant, probably the most awesome naval denial tool ever. Um, it's just The area of effect is so big and the inaccuracy is so high that it's basically impossible to dodge um, if it's firing at anything even resembling mid-range. And you can reach out and hit stuff. It's an awesome denial tool. If you can force a navy back far enough and... Um, and get a Skathis online, it does very well at denying crap like this. 
strap bombers, strap bombers everywhere. All right, where's our first launch? It's loaded, but he's not launching. Cole is has left. There is a chicken. Cole celebrating the fact that he broke through Navy. Yes, yes he did. He did win Navy in the end against all odds. Kudos to you, my good sir. You fought well. All right, chicken is now a problem because there's nothing really to kill the chicken with, and all the chicken has to do is walk up to the Alona Oss and yes. All right, there's the firing cycle. Where is he firing at? It doesn't matter because the chicken is very nearly there. Nukes away. Double check our nuke defense down here. Yes, there are six. He can deny three, four, five, six of these just with the front base. So the Alana Oss is outclassed at this point. Here comes the Salvation. Killing that thing with no mercy. Chicken walking in to finish the job. It's actually going to take fire from the Salvation, I believe. And all they need to do is hunt and kill that ACU. It is time for Search and Destroy. I'm not going to attempt to sing Metallica to you because my voice could not handle it at the moment. So you can rest easy in that fact. Nuke coming in. There's a loaded nuke defense. What do you know? Not that it's really going to accomplish anything. Strat bombers coming in by the dozens. Breaking down the shield so that the salvation can reach underneath. Here comes the SACUs. Spotting, maybe? No? Yes? No? Kerrick is going to take the fight to them, accepting his defeat with grace and a control K. <laughs> All right. That was an epic, epic game. I was kind of sad about how it ended because that was a, quite frankly, a stupid mistake that could have been easily prevented and the Northern team could have won. But all in all, that was pretty epic. That was back and forth the whole game. Good naval fighting. Good all around tons of t4s that was truly an epic alrighty guys hopefully you enjoyed that as much as i did i am thankful that you joined me for the entire cast that was a very long one and hopefully you guys have some replays that you can send me for the next go round i do need those replays so please send me any great games that you have preferably not on settings i would like to see some interesting maps maybe some white fire who knows uh, small cauldron any of those good maps that you don't see very often um, send me in those replays and I would be more than happy to cast your games that is all for this replay as always thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one